Hello and welcome to my channel. Well, it's that time of year again to because of all the forest fires. And you start hearing again about directed energy weapons causing this and that and how people provide pictures of proof and So this video is going to explain a couple examples that they blame do for and really I'm going to show you why that's not true. Alright, so define a ener directed energy weapon. A directed energy weapon is a ranged weapon that damages its target with highly focused energy including laser, microwave, part and particle beams. <clears throat> Potential applications. Uh, you can read right here by simple search engine search. I looked up our direct our do weapons systems visible to the eye. They, it will give you these results. Now, on the specific question, are they visible to the eye? Well, we know lasers, they have to add light to it. We know microwaves are not visible. Uh, and particle beams is the same as lasers. They have to add something to it to make it visible. Well, in a military setting they don't want it visible because then it gives away your position. This is about the only thing I could find so far and that's from this basically defense systems uh, website um, right here. Captured by a special camera a laser beam invisible to the naked eye shoots across the dark expanse of the day the David Taylor Model Basin at the Naval Surface Warfare Center in Bethesda, Maryland. I have been to this facility doing some work, so I'm well, f I'm familiar with where it's at. So that, with with these examples and simple knowledge of the military, and, I mean, you don't see a bullet trail. You know, they, because they don't want you to, you know, you fire, you're firing the ball, you don't want to give away your position. Well, it's the same with the laser in military operations, you don't want to give away your position. So they're not colored. Uh, now, this year, last year was all about some other pictures I'll get into, but this year we're seeing, oh, uh, you know, up on Go17, it was seeing some what look like laser light on a satellite but from a satellite in space are you gonna see a laser beam from miles away from the side you know common sense would say no yes they purposely make some lasers visible in construction applications which you can see that and find that information but generally you know or even you know you blow smoke do your laser beam for your little homemade, not homemade, but basically they have to intentionally make the lasers visible. Okay, so as in Go17 or College of DuPage website uh, or other portals to that satellite access, um, what explains why we see things on that satellite that some people are calling do this year is during the eclipse season. This website is the blog site to the College of DuPage. I emailed their guys last year about this right here, this specific thing, and this is the link they gave me. Uh, this link also happens to cover all kinds of things that happen during the satellite's camera during the eclipse season. And what is the eclipse season for the GO satellites? Let's see, it is due to light from the sun directly entering the imaging sensors during a period known as the eclipse season. The eclipse season occurs in the northern hemisphere during the spring and fall late August to mid-October, which is where this we are at the time. It was uh, five or six days ago on September 7th, so we're dead center in the eclipse season. During this period, the satellites enters the shadow of the sun during the late night hours. Sunlight enters the sensors and impacts the imagery and the satellite enters as the satellite enters and leaves the Earth's shadow. 
More details on this phenomenon can be found at this web page, which is basically NOAA. Um, there's some examples here. This is one I actually emailed them about. Um, and some of these others, and let's see, you know, errors in the imagery. And this is a decent example that we, some may say is harp or you know or do, but really it's just an anomaly in the camera in the satellite because they are just as susceptible to anomalies as cameras we use all the time when pointing kind of at a dark at a bright light source. So even though this billion dollar satellite probably is still susceptible to everyday things that affect our cameras. So if you'd like to read more about this, uh, I will show the NOAA site here explaining a little bit more detail and it does give a calendar for this eclipse season and when when you can expect it. So now that we've debunked the GO-17 do talk, uh, came over to directed energy weapons and showed that the laser is not visible in defense applications. Now you may have seen last year you've seen pictures we saw pictures like this all over the place you know here's a couple examples I found now the story was that oh it was directed energy weapons because all the houses and the cars are gone but the trees are still here that's a uh, precision strike well I'll show you here in a second why that is false but if you notice look around here yes the trees here in between the two rows of houses are, are quite damaged by fire uh, but you see out here the trees primarily out away from confined these would be hot spots because of the houses um, you can see that the trees at the top are pretty much undamaged and still green you can see the same thing here except directly around the houses where the, it was much hotter the fire burned hotter around because the house was on fire rather than this low brush In this one you can see the same even the park or whatever this is survived I mean everything else around it besides the plant life is all gone okay now here's the reason for that the actual reason tree bark and this from Princeton University tree bark thickness indicates fire resistance in a hotter future now this the new study found that trees were wide develop thicker bark when they live in fire prone areas the suggested the findings suggest that bark thickness could help prediction which which forests and savannas will survive a warmer climate in which wildfires are expected to increase in frequency hmm. it's not due to climate change uh, trees in regions where fire is common such as savannas and the forests of the western North America tend to have thicker bark while trees in tropical rainforests have thinner bark why would trees in the rainforest have thinner bark a lot more moisture less fires uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. We found large-scale evidence that bark thickness in a fire is a fire-tolerant trait, and we showed this in the case not just in particular biomes such as savanna, but across different types of forests, across regions, and across continents. According to this person. Research suggests that the link between bark thickness and fire resistance should be included in global climate models. Trees from regions that burn frequently could still become vulnerable if, as the risk for fire increases. But that's the point of the bark is to provide armor against fires. Now, if you know anybody that has a wood stove in their house for heat, they're actually heating their house by firewood ask them do they burn green wood 
or do they burn dry wood? And the answer is obvious, but I want to point out that point out that difference there: dry wood versus green wood, and green wood meaning freshly cut wood, like you just cut down a tree. They're not gonna that's not gonna burn very well because there's a lot of water in it. Yes, the middle is mostly dry, but again, you could you could probably uh, definitely Google that re uh, question as well if you don't know anybody. If you're in the a city, of course. But anyways, so knowing that trees have armor against fire, uh, they have water in them. And they can self replenish. Let me ask you from this picture. Do houses and tree uh, houses and cars have an internal have armor and an internal water sprinkler system? Yeah, you could say some houses may have a sprinkler system, mostly commercial buildings and industrial. Residential is quite it it's there, but it's rare to have a, a active sprinkler system in your house. So what kind of wood do they build your house with? Dry wood. Your car is flammable. It's highly flammable with all the chemicals and in the materials made to made in the car. So but does it have a sprinkler system or armor against fire? No. Every aspect of that car is flammable. And usually all that's left is the heavier duty framework in the in the parts of the engine. The aluminum's all melted because it doesn't have armor and it doesn't have a sprinkler system. So I'm making this video to to share with you all that let's use common sense and logic to to discern through the information that we are being given and that is being shared everywhere. So here's another one for the Knowledge Bank. I hope you all are having a good weekend and talk to you later.